In this video, we will look at PN junction diodes large signal model. In fact, large signal models are meant to model the IV characteristics of the device. And if you take a PN junction diode and its IV characteristics, taking the voltage across the diode as VD and the current flowing through the diode as ID, we have the diode symbol. Let's say this is a practical PN junction diode and the reference voltages are positive on P side and negative on N side where the voltage measured is VD and the current that is flowing through the diode let's say is ID and the current flowing through the diode to the voltage relationship we have the diode current equation which is ID is equal to I0 times E power VD over eta VT minus 1 where eta will be in the range of 1 and 2. If you plot the IV characteristics of this diode, the IV characteristics of the diode would look like this in forward bias and in reverse bias there would be a very small current that is flowing which we call the reverse saturation current I0 which is in fact represented here. Obviously this equation is complex if you are dealing with analog circuits because our intention is to first find the functionality of the circuit, not to go into detail of finding a complex equation and finding current and voltage values. So hence we need simplistic equivalent models. So for this, if we look at this, in forward bias, the diode would allow current to flow through and in reverse bias, it doesn't allow current to flow through, taking I0 being very, very small compared to the forward bias current. If you take the most simplistic model, we can take no current flowing in the reverse bias. So the current is zero. We can say in this case, the diode is a open circuit. And when we forward bias the diode, it allows any amount of current to flow through. So we can say that the IV characteristics of this model of the diode would be like this. So in forward bias, the diode would be like a short circuit. So now we're going to say that this model of the diode, this is ideal diode model, where in forward bias it is a short circuit and in reverse bias it's an open circuit. But of course it's not very close to the real characteristics because if we look at these characteristics and if we extrapolate this, we get a cut-in voltage. So cut-in voltage is 0.74 silicon diode and it is 0.3 for a germanium diode. So cut-in voltage is not considered. So what we would do is the next model that we talk about, we will consider the cut-in voltage. Of course, even here in reverse bias, the current would be zero as we assume. And instead of the diode being short circuit, immediately after VD is equal to zero. Here we will take the cut-in voltage and only when the voltage is equal to or beyond cut-in voltage, the diode would act like a short circuit. So the diode model that we would take here would be taking a diode symbol. This diode is basically the ideal diode model and we would put a voltage source here just to represent the cut-in voltage. What it means by is, if the voltage at the P side here is greater than the cut-in voltage, only then this ideal diode would become a short circuit. That's what even the current voltage characteristics show here. So this model is called a constant voltage model. If you pay close attention to this, still the second model also is not very close to what we have, the real PN junction diode characteristics. So there is certain slope, but that is exponential. So what we would do is to the next level, we'll introduce a resistance where the characteristics would be like this, where when the voltage is below the cut-in voltage, the current would be zero. So beyond cut-in voltage, we have a linear graph indicating that it has some resistance. So the equivalent model for that would be like this, where we have the ideal diode model here and obviously the cut-in voltage is also accounted here. Let's say that cut-in voltage is V gamma and we have a series resistance 
Well, let's call this RF, the forward bias resistance of the PN junction diode. So that this becomes very close to what we have there, but obviously that's an exponential graph and this is a linear graph represented with resistance. This model is called piecewise linear model. So when we started, we started with the ideal diode model and we moved on to constant voltage model and then now we are seeing the piecewise linear model. But of course, if the voltage range of operation is very high, let me say the voltage of operation when the diode is used, let's say the Vmax is far, far greater than V gamma, let's say, as an example. In that case, if you take the third one, piecewise linear model, then the cut-in voltage can be neglected. So the characteristics would look like this, where the cut-in voltage is assumed to be zero. So we have a linear graph here and zero current in the reverse mass. This fourth model that I'm talking here will be used for most of the cases in uh, rectifier derivations. As we're going to discuss diode circuits like rectifiers, clippers, clampers, and voltage multipliers, these equivalent circuits play a very important and crucial role for us to understand the analog circuits in a simpler way. Now after this, we'll start with half wave rectifier. If you like the video, please press the thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe and thank you for watching.